Hello, I'm George. Welcome to the channel. Now some of you might remember me from videos such as Regentone Radio Part 3 or Regentone Radio Part 2 or even if you've been following the series Regentone Part 1. I thought you wouldn't see me again. <laughs> I bet you thought you wouldn't see me again either. I know it's been a long time. Things have been a little bit different here I think is probably the safest thing to say and where are we well although we haven't been making videos in the workshop work has progressed and it's it's been getting there getting there slowly so rather than me waffle on for ages let's get in let's get you looking at the bench and we'll see exactly what's been happening well, on the bench in front of you is the Regentone radio chassis and the speaker panel and the speaker and I've refitted the controls for the volume and tone to the speaker panel. So this is how it would be inside the unit. We're in position ready to just turn the volume up a bit and we're getting in here. So before I subject you to all of that sort of noise, I'm just going to show the camera that this piece of wire is wedged into the aerial socket and in fact the overhead camera can just see that it's wedged in here. These wires are coming from my signal generator which we'll come to in a minute but we have got a bit of an aerial on here even if it's not much of one. Let's see what we can pick up. Right, now that is long wave and I've set the signal generator to a frequency of 200 kilohertz, which is roughly where Radio 4 in the UK is. Now, unfortunately, in this room, as we found out in the past, you can't hear any radio signals and normally I do my testing outside. But what I've done this time, just to show that the radio is actually receiving something rather than just noise from the cameras, I've set up the signal generator. So there we go, we've got long wave and we can tune off it and we can tune back to it. Now the dial cord isn't fitted, I'm purely tuning this by hand, it's not as gentle and as slow as the tuning dial knob would be but as you can see I can get it fairly accurate. We also haven't done an alignment on this set yet either, so it's pretty rough and ready. Let's try medium wave. Now, medium wave is slightly better in here, so let's just get some volume. And the reason I can hear that, and even though I don't like Bruce Springsteen at all, uh, is that the transmitter is actually a 500 watt relay transmitter located about a mile from here. So that's why I can pick this up in this room. I will change the signal generator to 1 megahertz or 1000 kilohertz just to show that we can pick up there's the tone again and that just shows that we are receiving off the signal generator. Let's go to shortwave now and again I don't hold out much hope here so what I'm going to do is again I will set the signal generator to let's go to 4 megahertz And as you see, we are still getting the signal. It's not as strong, but then, as I say, we haven't aligned this radio at all. So that's where we are with the chassis so far. Now, 
I was toying with the idea of doing an on-air alignment and just letting you sit here and watch me twiddle this, twiddle that, put the scope on it, make sure I was getting the signals. And I thought in the end, I did promise other information. So that is where we are with the chassis. So I'm going to just turn that off, let that cool down a bit, scratch my ear or scratch the back of my head, try not to get splinters. And we'll go over to what I was going to show you, which was the cabinet and what I've got to do to that. Right, the eagle-eyed among you will notice that this bit you've seen before. This was the bit with the dial glass and the dial cord hanging out and the plastic with the black rubbish round it and yeah, it wasn't pretty, was it? So what's happened to this? Well, I've taken the hinges right out. The dial cord is in a pile in the corner of the bench at the moment because I'll probably replace all of that. Uh, yes, the hinges have come out. They have been completely degreased. I haven't changed any paint on them or anything like that at this point. I just wanted to take all the mucky grease off. This is the back panel, which I've got to paint strip effectively and uh, refinish. See, I could leave it like this, but then this would let it down and the these odd bits here. So really, I, I think I want to to strip it down and make it more presentable. On the other side, you'll notice that I've scraped away all of that old black black glue. There's still some glue in here which I've got to scrape out. Yeah, generally this, this has been cleaned up. I'm going to put that to one side. This is the plastic that has aged and yellowed a bit. Again, I'm debating whether to reuse this piece or whether to replace it if I can find a suitable replacement. But this is the bit that would be stuck onto there. And then from the back, you just see the flat panel there. And then we're on to this piece, the outer plastic surround. Now, from the last video, you remember that this was in several pieces and had lots of cracks in it that basically looked pretty rotten. Well, it's not cracked anymore. And if I turn it over, you'll also see it's turned grey. There was crack there, there was a crack here, there was another one, where is it, which side is it? This side across here, which you can faintly see the outline of. There's a little chip here, um, yeah, let me move it off of that. What I've got here is I've got two very small areas which, even after the gluing and the sanding, are not quite smooth. They're not quite perfect. So I have bought some filler. And this stuff is uh, an epoxy putty which you use on making models and things like that. And I'm going to use it as a filler to fill in these bits and then I'm going to sand it down. I'm also going to try and remake this little notch that's that's been chipped out at some point. I'm going to try and just fill that and make it so that it looks like uh, there was nothing broken in the first place. And then we're on to the next bit. In the flick of a... to you... To me, it's going to be a little bit longer. Back, as I said, in a flash to you. To me, it's been a little while. What have I done? This is the cabinet. It's still big. It's still made of wood. And it's still... Yeah. What have I done to it so far? Well, apart from putting it on the bench, I've taken this cloth with white spirit on and I've just rubbed over it just to take out any of the dust from the sanding process. Now, I'll be honest, I'm looking at this wood and I'm thinking what a lovely grain pattern, what a lovely, lovely looking cabinet to be quite honest. 
So yes, I've done all the sides as you know, this camera will tell you, this camera will tell you, you can see it hand moving, pretty, pretty. This camera I've had to move further back because this is so big still. And yeah, just to show you, White Spirit, that's what I used. White Spirit, other brands are available. Let's cover up the name. Well, you've already seen it. So that's the, that's what I've used here. Now, I think I've made a little bit of a boo-boo because I've done the White Spirit and I've actually got an air freshening candle burning in the background. So this room is filled with solvent fumes and a naked flame. Safety first. It says on here, flammable liquid and vapour. Maybe fatal if swallowed. Yeah, well, I'm not going to drink it, even though it looks like vodka. It may cause drowsiness. Ooh. Yeah, ooh. If swallowed, if inhaled, if on skin. I forgot to put my gloves on as well when I did it. I got them ready, but I just forgot to put them on. There's a nice fire sticker there. Look at that. It says, don't do this. So I went and did it because I'm an idiot. Don't be an idiot. Be safe. Be healthy. Be conscious. Anyway, if the room blows up while I'm recording this, it'll make one hell of a great video. It'll go viral. I'll be famous and dead. On that bright note, when this all has dried, I've got uh, a couple of products to show you, which I'm going to be using. Now, this isn't sponsored. This isn't an advert. This isn't any of that malarkey. This is just what I went to the hardware store and bought. I'm going to be using colour on wood dye and in this case the colour is American Walnut because that is a light walnut and I'm going to put this tin up to that camera as well so that camera can look at it. Thank you very much. And that will be the wipe on dye and then after I've let that have a couple of coats as it says I think that's what it says. I'll read the instructions in a minute. I'm going to then coat it with a couple of coats of this, which is interior lacquer in a clear satin. This is not a colour at all. This is, this is really just clear lacquer. And why did I choose these particular products from the Colron range? Simply because when I went to the hardware shop, looked through their ranges, this was about the closest colour in dye that I could find in a, in a stain to match the original and to go with this rather than choose a different brand of sealer, varnish, whatever you want to call it, I went with the same brand of varnish, sealer, lacquer, whatever you call it, so that the two wouldn't interact chemically. There's nothing worse than doing a lovely job of colouring it, putting on a different brand of sealer, varnish, lacquer, whatever you call it. I'm going to say that a lot, aren't I? And find that the two chemically react and you have to either start again or you've ruined the cabinet. And I wasn't going to take that chance, so, you know, you buy the two. Once this has all evaporated off and I haven't exploded or blown up or anything like that, we'll be back and I'll, I'll go through the the start of the finish. I won't make you sit through watching me do the whole case and yeah we'll have a look and see what it looks like. So for you guys it will be a quick flick of the wrist and a click of the fingers but for me it might be an hour or two. So we'll see you later. Okay right so the white spirit has dried off and I've done shaking the tin. So after reading the instructions it says stick on a bit of rag, cloth, sponge and rub it with the grain. So working quickly. So I'm going to work quickly with the grain. Obviously I need to put a bit more on this because it's quite absorbent. And push it in to get an even colour. Okay. 
yeah so give it a little while this is going to take uh, a little little long little long time and I will bring you back when it's time to do the the lacquer this apparently is going to take somewhere in the region of 24 hours to to do it's going to need a the first coat then it's going to need a second coat and after that it says it's going to need 24 hours to dry so uh, yeah it gives it gives gives it a little bit of time to to work its way in so i shall see you in well it will be a quick flick of the wrist again but for you guys for me it's going to be tomorrow night so we'll see you soon right and as i did say it was just going to be a quick for you guys a, a flick off the wrist no that's not what i said a quick flick of the wrist there we go right so where are we well we're here sitting at the bench and this has now had two coats of the Calron wood dye and it is dry it's been sat here it is the next night and it is again 206 a.m because there is only one two o'clock and it's about now and yeah um i think it's actually come along really really nicely i think it's 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 got a really nice color to it now i'm just about to go with the satin finish the lacquer so i'm going to open the tin and put on the first coat let that dry and then obviously uh, let's see how long does it take uh, da, 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 da. at least two hours before each coat well I'm gonna do one coat tonight and I'll do some more tomorrow so there we go I shall open the tin start doing the painting and of course using a scalpel to uh, open that now that is interesting this stuff is white um, I don't know if you can see that but it looks like PVA glue now maybe it will change color once I've stirred it and keep stirring it like it says but uh, I don't know no it seems to be staying white You know, and the reason to stir it rather than shake it is so you don't fill it with bubbles because bubbles make a nasty finish so you're just trying to stir it not shake it bit bit James Bond martini like uh, what am I using here I'm using a two inch brush it might be overkill but it's uh, it's a brush and it works and uh, let's just paint this thing with the PVA glue it looks very very sort of well, almost UV reactive this stuff is uh, quite a quite a glow under the lights on the camera it's almost purple now I'm just trying to put on a nice even coat and hopefully this will uh, will work nicely and uh, come up very well I want to get it right in the in these lines here and try and fill in all these bits and yeah I shall uh, come back to you once the first coat's gone on and you can have a quick look at what it looks like and then uh, we'll have another go tomorrow evening at the next lot so we'll see you soon right okay so I said I was gonna do the lacquering and the cabinet and what have you well I've done three coats of lacquer so far and I've smoothed it down and now it's time rather than the final coat I need to put the logo back onto the set so what I've got here is I've got an A4 sheet of what do they call it water slide paper and from the photograph that I took of the original logo I used Photoshop I scaled it to size for printing and I printed out a small square 
So what I've got to do is I've just got to turn this into a standalone logo. I can't really put the wood grain on there because it shows not only the damage in the wood, but it shows the mistakes that the laser printer has when it's been printing onto the onto the paper. So I'm just going to get the scalpel and I'm going to just gently cut off all of the remaining paper that I haven't used because that can be used again. So we'll put that to one side and it can go back in the packet. And then I'm just going to trim this roughly like that. And now it's just a case of being very sort of careful and going round the outline. That looks fine. So let's bring the pot of water and we'll just put that in there to curl up. Now you can just see here where the old logo was, where it had been transferred on. So when this has uh, soaked enough, it will just slide off the backing paper and I'll slide it onto the wood and then we'll get ready for another coat of lacquer. So just bring it out, get it in position. And then get some absorbent paper. Just make sure it's central, it's in roughly the original spot. And there is the logo back on the cabinet. So now I'm going to uh, let that dry for a little bit, make sure that all the moisture's come out from underneath it. And then I'm gonna just paint another coat of lacquer on the top and that should then be the cabinet finished. From there, I think we're gonna call this the end of this part. It's been dragging a long time and you haven't heard from me in a while. So yeah, I think, I think we're gonna finish this one here. What I will do is I will say thank you for bearing with me and uh, hopefully we'll be getting the turntable itself sorted out, getting the alignment done on the chassis of the radio and putting it all back together, which in reality isn't too hard of a job. I think the hardest part for me is certainly the woodworking because it's something I'm not very good at. So we'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. If you like it, click the like button, leave your comments down the bottom, tell me I'm a complete idiot, do whatever you like. But uh, yeah, stay happy and we love you all. Watch the rest of the series and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.